Hi, it's Robin with SeniorSafetyAdvice.com. Welcome to our series on hospice care. We're going to try and answer all of your most pressing questions about hospice. So tune into the series as each of the videos are released. So this is the first one in our series. How do I know if hospice care is right for my elderly parent or even right for you, actually? Unlike trying to maybe um, move a parent into a nursing home or them needing you know, help with their daily activities and having to go into an assisted living program, hospice has very specific criteria that a person needs to meet in order to be eligible to have hospice care. So the first thing is that they need to have been diagnosed by a doctor, medical professional, that um, they have less than six months to live. Now, as we'll talk about in a bit, that doesn't always pertain. In other words, if they live longer than the six months, that doesn't mean they have to be taken off of hospice care. But the beginning criteria is that according to medical uh, providers, they feel that the person has less than six months to live. Now, how do you know whether that you should even be seeking hospice? One of the first indicators is that the person is experiencing a rapid decline. Now, for example, my mother was diagnosed with a terminal brain tumor. She was given four to six weeks to live at that point. She had a very rapid decline at the very beginning. She went from being able to walk on a Friday to being confined to a wheelchair and unable to walk on a Monday. I'm not kidding, same weekend. It was ridiculous how fast she deteriorated, but that was a very good indicator that hospice was right for her. Another indicator can be if the person has lost a lot of weight. Maybe they're eating well, but they're continuing to lose weight. This is something that happens oftentimes in a cancer scenario. Another indicator is if they're bed bound or if the person is really basically asleep more than they're awake in a day. So again, thinking in terms of cancer care, in a lot of cases, as the person gets closer to the end of their life, they spend much more time sleeping than they do awake. That would be a good time to ask their doctor whether or not they thought hospice care was indicated. And lastly, another indication is if the person is in more pain. Now again, thinking of cancer, but obviously that can apply to other conditions as well, other illnesses. But if the person is experiencing more and more pain, typically you would maybe want to ask the doctor then if they thought it was time for the person to be put under hospice care. So one question people often ask about hospice is can I or can my loved one be under hospice care if they're by themselves? Well, the answer is yes, with some criteria. <laughs> So if the person is going to be in a hospital setting for hospice care, then they can be alone because they're in their room, there are hospital staff that come and check on them, nurses and whatever, providers, etc. So there is somebody with them. But it is one thing to consider if the person is on their own and they're going to be receiving at-home care, then I would tell you that that person really needs to be able to do a lot of things on their own still. So, for example, using my mother, again, as an example, once she came out of the hospital with her diagnosis, she was confined to a wheelchair. So there were many things that she could not do on her own. So, yes, hospice was indicated, but I would have said unless she had somebody with her, she would not have been able to do in-home hospice care. It would have had to be in a hospital setting. So just something to consider if you or your loved one is going to uh, go under hospice care. Now, another thing to think about with hospice care is that six months criteria. There's a myth surrounding hospice that the person can only be put on it if they're in their final days, and that is not true. Again, the criteria is that they need to have six months or fewer to live. But also, if you get to the end of the six months and the person has rallied and they're doing well, then there's the misconception that they have to come off of hospice care. And that is not true. Hospice care can be renewed. You do need to check with the hospice provider in, and find out what the state regulations are because some states 
will require that the doctor or medical professional recertify, so to speak, that the person has six months to live again, you know, or less. Um, in other states, depending, then sometimes that Medicare, sorry, that hospice just renews and they just continue the hospice care as long as it's still that the person is not going to be here in the next six months. So again, remember that hospice care can be at home or it can be in a hospital setting, depending on where you live. Like in my mother's case, she didn't have a choice of a hospital setting. They were in a very small town in Georgia and there just was no inpatient facility available. So she underwent her care until her final days at home, which she was happy about because she was at home in familiar surroundings. But also know that that is a decision you that may affect your decision of undergoing hospice care as to what, where you're going to receive the care. The other thing I would tell you is hospice care is very expensive. So again, you want to be sure that your insurance will provide for that. If you're um, under or your loved one is under Medicare Part A, generally they're covered, but it's not 100% guaranteed. So be sure that you check with that first before signing up for a hospice program. And the last thing that I'll tell you is make sure that you interview more than one hospice provider. Most cities, even my mother's very small rural town, had two or three um, people that she could choose from who were hospice providers. Bigger cities have even more. And so you want to make sure you interview a couple of different providers to be sure of what benefits they will give you. Um, things like, will they provide durable medical equipment like a hospital bed or a wheelchair? Um, just things like that. What type of services will they provide? Um, for you or the loved one who's under the care, but also for the caregiver. So maybe, you know, do they provide respite care coverage so that you can get a break from your caregiving duties if you're the caregiver? So anyway, I hope this has given you a lot to think about. I'm linking to our next video in the topic up here. And then if you will um, subscribe to our channel and also hit the notification bell, you'll see all of these videos on hospice along with our other videos with tips and hints about aging in place safely because they will, you'll be notified every time they are released. So thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next series on hospice. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.